Hello, bright and shiny beacons of light. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspired Nation. Usually I have Ru, Ruru the rooster, that is, or Ruru the guru by my side. He went to sleep a little bit early tonight. We've been doing some training as we're getting him back in shape. Or actually, he's getting back in shape. He's getting super strong, but he wanted to go to sleep early. And I waited till the last minute deciding, do I get him back up or do I not? And my apologies, but I'm letting Rue sleep in this evening. I know very much that he'd want to see you and to say hi to you. Um, however, tonight I'm going to give him rest. I, I guess I can give you the 10 second update. Tonight we're gonna talk about though. I wanna make sure you know what we're talking about. We're gonna talk about how you tell, is this my energy? Is this someone else's energy? Have I just become Velcro for everybody around me? And how I can kind of steer pull off that Velcro and pull away other people's energies if it's stuck or glomming onto me. We're going to be covering all that. With that said, I've been working on Rue with his pectoral muscles, his wing muscles, his flight muscles. And um, we are in a beautiful uh, glamping cabin is the best way to describe this beautiful place that we're in. And it's a very, very steep flight of stairs, 5, 10, 15 almost 20 stairs to my right, Rue is able to get up the stairs now. Now, he doesn't fly up the stairs. He can fly up a few at a time, but he is now flying up the stairs, and it is pretty, pretty cool. Making sure yeah, we're on the right camera. Last week, I was kind of bright on camera, and it looks like we've got the same experience going on here as well. Can, can everybody hear me all right? Because I'm not getting the... It's not showing me the mic levels that I should be seeing, I guess because I had to refresh the computer beforehand, who knows, but everybody can hear me great. All right, excellent. So I wanna dive into things. With that said, uh, oh, one last thing. It was my birthday a couple of days ago and so many people found this card online or in my classes and signed it. Thank you so, 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 so much. How does it get any better than this? How does it get any better than this? This is sticky energy that you want. We, <laughs> we want the love and I'm feeling the love and I thank you for the love. Oh, let's do this. There. Now I've got to sit back a little bit, but you should get much better lighting. How's that? How does it get any better than this? All right, let's see what we're going to be talking about here tonight. We are talking about other people's energy and when we talk about other people's energies, I've said it many times before, but it bears repeating. If you're attracted to my energy, if you're attracted to this channel, it means you're energetically sensitive. Whether you call yourself an empath or not, you have an extrasensory sense, extrasensory sense, extrasensory skill in feeling other people's energy. This is a great thing. This can make you a mystic or a mystic in training. It's why I have our whole school of mystics. And I'll encourage you to come join us on Wednesday. And I'll talk with you more about that in a little bit. But it means this energetic sensitivity in you, it really is a super skill once you learn how to cultivate it, once you learn how to work with it. However, this sensitivity, or you may have been grown, you may have grown up being told you are too sensitive. This sensitivity means that it is very easy to feel or overfeel other people's energy. And in the old days, that could drive you mad. In today's world, you can literally lose yourself in other people's energy. It can get you lost in life, feeling dazed the least. It can have you losing your hopes and dreams. Um, years ago, because I recognized this in myself, um, I was, I had a dream that I was going to sell all of my racing gear and I was going to um, bike across the country for people with learning disabilities and attention deficit disorder, for which I did write a book about, write a book, even though this is ride a bike. Um, and so I listened to the dream and I went and sold all my racing gear, flew myself out to Portland, Oregon, and rode across the country 5,000 miles solo, unsupported, it's craziness, in 40 days. Now, I was in relatively close touch with my parents. 
during this journey, I never told them I was riding my bike across the country. I would actually take uh, phone calls with them and uh, I'd be on my bike. I'd be have my headphones on. I said, yeah, I'm just out for a little bike ride. Thought I'd say hi or something. And they bought it, thankfully. Here's why thankfully, and I love my parents very much. It's, it's too easy to pick on them. And I don't pick on them other than anything other than out of pure love. All of our parents, without exception, have a unique superhighway to our soul or to our emotional center. And it is very easy for what they say or feel, that's the key, what our parents feel for us to take on. And if you only have one parent for parent, or adopted family, foster parents, the list goes on and on. It's very easy to take that on as our own and to get very confused about whose idea or whose energy it is. So I'm going to do this bike ride across the country. Had I called my parents and said, ring, ring, you're never gonna guess. Well, this shows old school versus new school. You're never going to guess what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to do this bike ride across the country. They would have gone, are you mad? Are you crazy? What are you thinking? Have you thought this through? Do you know what can happen? Do you know how dangerous it is? And I would have patonk, put down the phone and gone, you're right. They're right. What was I thinking? You ever experienced this? This is when you take on someone else's energy. Parents are the easiest example because it is so easy to take on their energy, their emotions, their feelings, their thoughts, their ideas, their hopes, their dreams, their worries, their concerns, their anxieties, their phobias, without even realizing we just took the gift from them. Or basically they baited the hook and now we're now on the hook. This happens with others though as well. So we have a little mini saga right now. It's been interesting. So this beautiful RV that we used to get across the country and uh, really part of our pregnancy. And it's beautiful and it's awesome. And it's a rocking RV. And it's way more than what we need now because it's kind of settled down time. We'll go out for weekends. We'll take Buzz out to Colorado and back perhaps. But we don't need this kind of 65 foot road train. And we found ourselves in the last few weeks, we've gone to dealerships a little bit. We've met with people who've wanted to uh, buy the RV. Dharma Cohen, how does it get any better than this? Thank you for your kind donation, Dharma. And I, a little birdie says that you're feeling much better. Um, and back to yourself. So how does it get any better than this, Dharma? How does it get any better than this? So much love. So we meet with people about the RV. Uh, let's say we go to a dealership. We went to dealerships on my birthday, and I recommend uh, against doing that. That was a technical error, perhaps, in judgment, um, rather than going to the lake, which is what I really wanted to do. But I wanted to get this RV going to feel the freedom of having it off our hands. So we go to the dealership. And the dealers are talking like this, and they're saying, you got to see this, and you got to see the other thing, and here's what's coming in, and here's what we got, and this is that. Hmm. And you leave the dealership. And now you're talking like this and you're going like that and you've got to take care of this and you've got to... Wait a second. Why am I speaking like the car or RV salesperson? Why am I speaking with their urgency? Why have I taken on their tonality? What's even more interesting, or we could say dangerous, is... When you take on someone else's frequency and energy, you very quickly begin to feel what they feel and think what they think. Why? Because information is carried in energy. If you get almost nothing else tonight, realize information is carried in energy. And everybody has a unique energetic fingerprint or imprint. If you start to play with someone else's imprint or fingerprint, you end up downloading their information. Trust me, you don't want their information. You want 
only your own. Because if you end up, you're an empath. I know you're an empath. If you end up taking on everybody else's energy. And empaths, we want to save the world. Let me save the world. We're wired for it. You're wired for it. You may be exhausted, overwhelmed. It may have bit you in the butt before, but we are wired for it. We are the wayfarers of the world. But if you end up taking on someone else's energy, you end up getting caught up in their drama. You start speaking like them. You start worrying like them. You start shifting your beliefs and ideas to get in sync with them. This is such a key because in today's world, it feels like we're spiraling down into the sewer, which we're not. I promise you, we are not spiraling down into the sewer. However, we're getting more energetically sensitive and the world is on energetic overdrive and we take on all of it not realizing a large percentage of the world needs to make a radical shift needs to wake up not out of a badness not out of a gloom and doom but it's time for us to ascend to rise up to the newer version of humanity and so there's so much fear and darkness and worrying going on to help people to wake up but you're here. That means you're already waking up. You don't need to take on their wake up energy if you're already waking up. So instead, we start walking around like flypaper, taking on energy from this person, from that person, from the other person. And we get so heavy and bogged down and fear based. And it's crazy. On that note, I'll make a many shameless plugs tonight. We have our School of Mystics four Wednesdays a month. This Wednesday is an extra special one. I so encourage you to join me because we're going to be doing a huge clearing on removing other people's energy from you. Tonight, by the end of the night, you'll get a good idea. Am I carrying other people's energy? What does that look like? What does that feel like? Wednesday, I'm going to help you peel all the layers of Velcro away. You can start ahead of time just by gaining awareness but if you join the School of Mystics this Wednesday, we're going to do this massive clearing together. The cool thing is when you clear on your own, you kind of, I don't know, pull at that Velcro or pull at that Band-Aid and part of it comes off. When you have the power of the group behind you and you rip that sucker, it comes off forever because there is an energy in the group. I mean, you can feel it tonight and we'll probably do a short meditation tonight and you'll feel the buzz there as well. Another keynote, I know I'm pulling a lot of little asides. We are starting a meditation channel. Uh, it was going to go live today. My guess is it will go live next Tuesday. Um, not Monday, because next Monday is Labor Day here in the States. And so my guess is we're going to shift this event from next Monday to next Tuesday. Mark that in your calendar. We're going to give you off next Monday and we're going to make it next Tuesday. But we're starting a meditation channel, an Inspire Nation meditation channel. Thank you, Bavik. Thank you, Jessica. And thank you to my entire Dream Team for pulling this together, Aya and everyone. So we're going to start it next Tuesday with lots of cool meditations. And when you come and do these meditations and other people are doing the meditations with you, you will feel the energetic shift. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about this energy. In this day and age, there is energy being thrown left and right and center. Why? People are starting to wake up that there's a power within them. They don't know how to use it. They don't know what to do with it. And so they end up, I don't know why I'm thinking of gorillas, baboons, whoosh, whoosh, split. <laughs> they end up throwing stuff. Energy gets to it. <laughs> thrown at you left, right, and center. <laughs> Dare to go on a subway today or uh, go into a large auditorium today. There is so much energy being thrown around. Almost wonder in some small way if that, and I'm hearing, don't say it, if that has to do with COVID about learning how to be able to step back and get into our own boundaries get back into our own energy. As an empath, we're incredibly energetically sensitive. 
That's to help us lead people, it's to help us heal people and to illuminate the way. The trick is we need to be able to get back into our own energy first. And it's so easy to lose it, but we cannot fully live. We cannot fully embrace life. We cannot fully be the greatest version, fullest version, most alive version of ourselves between you and me. We can't fully live. We can't fully live if we're living in someone else's energy. We're lost. How often do you feel lost today? It ain't coming from you. So we get to work on this. In fact, and I got to watch the word work. Work means it sound like it's something hard. Here is a very simple way to tell if you're taking on anybody else's energy. One super simple way. I just mentioned it. Do you feel lost? Because that lost, that confusion, that sense of I'm not where I'm supposed to be didn't come from you. It never, ever does. It's sure, it's quite possible, probable, likely that there's something so much greater out there for you. But that sense of lost is a confusion in the nervous system caused by competing energies or competing demands. What's a competing demand? Trying to please two taskmasters. I want to go this way, but I need to please these other people over here. I feel I want to do this, but for some reason, I'm also feeling pulled out and, and told I want to do this. It is being split in half, bifurcated, or more like taking a, a dousing rod and snapping the thing in two. That's what we're feeling today. And that makes us feel lost. So if we want to step forward, if we want to be the greatest, and Hannah's actually awake, so I guess I can be loud right now. I'm going to angle this camera a little bit better. Bear with me, everyone. That's better. Now we're not chopping the top of my head off. Um, I tend to go quiet, and I, I'm getting better at it because I have big energy, and I can wake up the baby. You don't want to wake up the baby. I can wake up the baby without even drying. So I'm kind of a little bit, woohoo quiet right now. But if we want to live our greatest woo-hoo-edness, if we want to live our greatest life, whatever that means, it certainly doesn't have to be that you're woo-hoo king of me or anything of the sort, but it means you get to clear away other people's energy. If you don't clear away their energy, you don't have clarity of mind, you don't have clarity of soul, and you feel disempowered. If you start to recognize this energy isn't mine. Get rid of that. This energy isn't mine. Get rid of that. This giant boulder on my chest. That's not mine. And you get rid of that. Then all of a sudden, it's like getting a, ironically, new pair of glasses. I got new glasses in tonight. Prescription actually didn't work. Who knows? <laughs> but you get in new glasses. And suddenly, you can see the world more clearly. You breathe easier <sighs> and you feel lighter. That's again why I want you to join me on Wednesday so I can clear the heck out of this for you. You can do it on your own and it's very simple to be clearing this energy. But again, in the power of the group and me going through and diving deep and diving deeper and diving deeper still in our school of mystics, I'm going to get you so much lighter. And I know baby Hannah just had a bath. I'm going to get you baby squeaking clean. <laughs> so one way we can tell if we're carrying someone else's energy is that four letter L word that's not love. The four letter, <laughs> letter L word <laughs> is lost. The second way we can tell if we're carrying someone else's energy is a sense of being stuck or a sense of dread or a sense of anxiety that you can't shake. Now that dread, that dread didn't 
come from you. It's coming from two taskmasters. It's coming from you energetically wanting to go one direction and this energy that's being stuck and glommed onto you wanting to go in another direction. Dread is not our natural state. Baby Hannah doesn't wake up in the morning dreading the day ahead. She wakes up super happy. Bing, bing, bing. Super incredibly happy. That's your natural state too. But not when something else is present. When someone else's energy is there, it is so hard to feel bing, bing, bing. And I do this with her. I go bing. She goes, ha. Ah. I go like this. She goes, ha. Ah. It's her natural state. It's your natural state, but not when you're being pulled apart from the inside out. Thank you, P. Durano. Thank you for your kind donation. How does it get any better than this? How does it get any better than this? Thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's fine to send love. Send all the love you can. I send love, I send love, I send love, Peter. It's interesting. I've talked about being hit with this energy right now. There is a general zeitgeist or feeling or sense on the planet of dread right now. And that's by design. And I don't say it's this bad person, that bad person, or the, the this being or the that being. All of it is a teaching opportunity. All of it is a learning opportunity. And lately, I've been getting a lot of learning opportunities. I don't know about you. And I get to remember that, oh, that didn't come in at all how I expected. Or, oh, those glasses came in blurrier. <laughs> I get to remember these are all teaching, learning opportunities. We're in a learning environment. And so for a minute, I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Maybe you're experiencing that too. The general milieu feeling right now is a, uh, a sense of being defeated, a sense of complete and total disempowerment. If we see it as a teaching opportunity, it is to recognize what's disempowering us to help us leap up. So there is this subset of the world that is helping us to feel more disempowered, kind of like the old guard to keep us stuck in the old. At a time where we're so energetically sensitive, we're becoming more empowered. That's why. You're watching this, for instance, right now, or other great teachers from around the world. It's to help you step back into your own power. Jasmine Alvarado, thank you so, 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 so much. Jasmine, how does it get any better than this? How does it get any better than this? I'm going to pull out some love, send it your way. You can literally play with energy this way. I'm not kidding. If I wanted to take Jessica's in the kitchen, I go right out of my heart and I go, and she will go, not realize what happened, but she will be hit with a wave of love. <laughs> Who knows what will be coming back my way after I've hit her with a wave of love. But man, it's all energy. It's all energy. So right now in the world, there is this general sense of extreme anxiety. And it's completely uncalled for. So if somebody's running at you with a knife, that's a time for extreme anxiety. That's a time to run and run fast. But the majority of the extreme anxiety in the world today is overkill. It's systems out of balance and it's whacking us out of balance. Why? Because we're empaths. We're taking on everyone else's energy. So if you're feeling lost, stuck, dread, uh, and worried, anxious, concerned. You don't even know why you're concerned. You step out the day and you're going, oh my God. Oh, oh my God. And if somebody tells you what, why, what are you saying? Oh my God for you say, I don't even know, but I just don't feel good. It just doesn't feel right. Or if something that you would normally worry about on a level one or two or three, all of a sudden is an eight, nine or 10. It ain't yours. So important to understand. If you're overemphasizing an emotion if you feel an overly uh, an over over abundant 
sense of dread, of worry, of concern. It's not yours. Or you find yourself speaking like this and you're talking, no, that is the uh, car salesman. That's not yours either. Or here's another one. If you find yourself thinking like someone else or making strange decisions, what's a strange decision? Well, this is the white, I'm going to give you the white smock syndrome because it's the easiest to, uh, oh, we've all experienced it. You go into the doctor and let's say you want a particular test. You feel your thyroid might be out of balance or who knows what. You want to test the length of your second toe because you feel the second toe is too long. It doesn't matter. You go into the doctor's office and you're like, Doctor, I want to check the length of my second toe. I really want to see if my second toe is longer than the first because that would explain everything. And all of a sudden, the doctor gives you a talk and tells you about uh, all the lengths of the toes and the this and the that and the other thing. And at the end of it, you go, oh, you're right. What was I thinking about? I don't need to check the length of my second toe. And you leave there kind of in this trance state. And you got home and you go, but I, I really wanted to check the length of the second toe. What happened? The doctor, the white smock, gifted you with his or her energy. You got in their headspace, and of course, from their perspective, from their shoes, tell me you haven't experienced this, it made sense. Then you got home, you came back into your space, you got back into your energy field, and you go, what in the world was I thinking? Another example is where you lose a sense of confidence. You know, I'm going to go do this bike ride across the country. I'm really excited about it. I know it's going to go great. Ring, ring, how are you doing? Talk to my parents and go, what was I thinking? My confidence went out the window. Why? Nobody else, remember this, this is another, remember this if nothing else, no one else shares your confidence for anything. Why? No one else is in your shoes. They can cheer you on. They can believe you can do it. Only you, only you can know you can do something. Deep down in your soul into someone else's energy or something. Your confidence goes out the window. You're no longer standing in your energy, you're standing in their energy, and their energy doesn't have a clue of whether you can do something or not, which is why you'll pick up the phone to go tell a dear someone of something you're going to do. They're going to tell you something else. You're going to get off the phone and go, on, boy, was I crazy. What was I thinking? Not about the call but about the idea you had that was actually just as good of an idea. So, as an empath, you have mystic tendencies. That's why I have the School of Mystics. Do come join us for the School of Mystics and come join us for the Clearing Wednesday. And I know there are so many uh, mystics in training, we call them. We call us, all of us are mystics in training. Uh, you'll, you'll find in the chat window there uh, saying how much they're enjoying it. And, and uh, I hope everybody is excited for the clearing on Wednesday. You're energetically sensitive. You're an empath. It means you are a mystic or a mystic in training. What is a mystic? A mystic is someone who exists at a higher level or on a higher playing field, which means a true mystic, before they're well-trained, thinks this world makes absolutely pfft, no sense. No, nah, it doesn't make any sense at all. And you're right. It's crazy. It's insane. It's, it's nuts. It's nuts out that door. But it's nuts by design to help you to ascend, to help you to graduate, not to leave the earth school. It's a personal choice. But to be able to operate on the earth school without being stuck in the earth school on it, not in it. An empath and a mystic 
when trained, that empath becomes a mystic. A mystic is able to live on both sides of the veil. What's that mean? It means I can see the energy that you're gifting me with, not you in particular, but I can see the energy that you, um, uh, loving soul on the streets, are attempting to gift me with so that you can get me in your hooks and strings and you can reel me back in so you can commiserate whatever fear, worry, concern, anxiety you may have. Misery loves company. You want to call me in. I can see that. But as a mystic operating up here, and that's what I train you how to do. As a mystic operating up here, you have these giant scissors and you see what's going on and you can cut the cord. A mystic is someone who sees the matrix, who can navigate through the matrix. Thank you so much, Georgia. How does it get any better than this? And uh, Georgia uh, has the uh, logo by her name in pink, which means she is a mystic circle member. And we mystic circle, if you click the join button down below, we have near daily videos of what's going on in our lives, of what we've been learning, how we've been growing, uh, lessons, uh, meditations, all sorts of cool stuff and more. Although uh, our Mystic Circle manager has been on vacation the last few days, so I think there might be a queue of videos coming out in just a few short days, but thank you for your kind donation, Georgia. So a mystic is someone who can operate on both sides of the veil and is freed from the matrix even if living in it. Freed from the matrix even if living in it. Why? Because you can see the energetic strings and pulls and Velcro rather than being stuck and entangled in them. I like to say a mystic sees without ears, sees without eyes, hears without ears, and knows without thought. Because you're living from the you that's on the other side of the veil or from the more sensitive side of your beingness. The sensitive side of you has never left home. It is you on the other side of the veil. And of course you wanna help everyone from there. Of course you wanna help heal everyone from there. Of course you want to listen to everyone and be there for everyone. It can be quite draining. And so that empathic side of you means you're like Velcro until you learn how to scrub off this energy. In fact, we need to take you from a sensitive nature, and that's your nature, to a Teflon nature. Why Teflon? Well, I want you to be able to recognize energy and help heal anyone and everyone you want, but start first with yourself. But I don't want you ever again to take on anyone's energy. So when you start acting, when you start speaking, when you start thinking like others, so I'm going to give you some good tips here for tonight. I'm not going to just say, come join me Wednesday for the clearing. Where's the fun in that? I want to give you tips you can take action on today. If you start acting, speaking, thinking, walking, talking like somebody else, remember, that's not you. You can say, that's not me. That's not me. I didn't talk like that. I don't talk like that. What? Huh? What? That's not me. And then take action accordingly. So, of course, Wednesday, I'm going to be doing a massive clearing to help you take action. But one thing that you can do right now, I want you to try this in the next few days, in fact. See if there's a time where you catch yourself what I call spinning or buzzing with the energy of someone else around you. For instance, let's say you're fairly calm and relaxed and you get in line at Starbucks and you get all jittery. Or you're at the gym and suddenly you feel real claustrophobic. Or you're at work and you start to feel real upset or angry. First off, recognize this is not me. This is not mine. And then I want you to pause, stop, and bring yourself back to earth. Bring yourself back right back here. This is where I want you, back here. How do you come back here? Or in essence, how do I connect you to heaven and earth? Here's a very simple 
tool. <sighs> what I like to do is take my hand, bring it up, drop it down, and imagine I'm rooting into the earth. Breathe. Root. Breathe. Root. You can use your hand to connect heaven and earth and simply drop down into your true essence, into your true nature. You could use both hands. Go up, come down and see the roots go out and imagine roots going out through your feet into the earth or into the center of the earth, making you a mighty oak again. That's your true nature, your orchid nature. We breathe in, bring our hand up, connect to heaven, go down or take both hands down and root into the earth. When you're grounded and rooted, you're not carrying anyone else's energy. So if you think of a giant tree, do you know there is much of the tree beneath the surface as there is above? And that's what keeps the tree from tipping over. It's these amazing roots. If I can help you to grow those roots strong, and every single time you feel yourself unrooted, you work on growing them deeper and deeper and stronger and stronger still, then actually the crazy world around you is only going to make you stronger, only going to bring you more into your orchid nature, into your true self and protect you from the winds of other people's energy. Yeah, you can protect yourself from other people's energy by staying rooted and grounded. Do this exercise each day. Do it anytime you feel ungrounded. You can do it in line. Somebody in front of you is making you really nervous, really nervous, dude. Nobody even has to see, hear, or know what you're doing. If you're concerned somebody's looking or if you're carrying groceries, imagine that you're going. And just root right into the earth. The next tool I want to teach you tonight, because I got a few goodies. This is the second one. And yes, please do. Uh, do come Wednesday so we can clear, 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 clear all of the energetic gunk and <laughs> junk and skunk and everything that is stuck to you right now. Let's help peel that off uh, as part of our school of mystics. So, um, and then the next month, so this is kind of like a, a, a really cool bonus section session we're doing as we're uh, finishing up sound frequency vibration this month. And the next month is going to be on thinking without thought how you plug into higher vibration frequencies of information from the other side. In other words, how you get downloads on a continuous basis and operate from these downloads. That's what we're going to be teaching you next month. So when you join the School of Mystics, you get all of our past classes. You've got a third eye opening class we did last month. You've got a wave of peace class. It might be my all-time favorite class that we had a few weeks ago as well. And uh, you'll be getting how to think without thought on top of this clearing. How does it get any better than this? All right. Next tool. Awareness. Awareness is over 50% of the key of shedding other people's energy. We simply get to ask ourselves, whose energy is this? So you feel yourself find it feeling funky, feeling in a funk, feeling weird, feeling stuck, feeling down, depressed, uh, exhausted. You know, why am I feeling so exhausted? I should be really happy right now. Like baby Hannah. <laughs> Ask yourself, whose energy is this? Where did this energy come from? Do I really think this? Is this really my thought? Thoughts? Are these thoughts mine? Are these thoughts mine? What a key question to ask, are these 
thoughts, mind. And then what I want you to do is to do what I call the emotion trace. This is the key, the emotion trace. What's an emotion trace? It's where you look back at a feeling and you try to trace it, to draw it, to pull on that string and follow it back to its origin. So if we trace, I've had several things come in recently that just have not come in right at all. If we trace back the emotion behind it, I'll find it's about screwing things up, messing things up, getting things wrong. Ah, things that I was gifted, energy I was gifted as a kid, which wasn't even mine. As a kid, you don't care about getting things right and wrong. You just want to have fun. But then you are gifted. This is good. This is bad. And it all gets to be cleared. But I can pull on that string and see where it started from. Why am I getting so upset that something came in that had nothing to do with me? isn't as I expected. Or I went to the eye doctor, I got a prescription, they said you, your vision with these glasses on is 2015. Awesome, how does it get any better than that? than that? I get the glasses in today and it's blurry. If I was to go, oh man. And I did with another thing that came in earlier today, I'm, I'm working through this like you are. But ask, wait a second, where did this emotion come from? Where did it start? When did I first experience this? When did I first experience the, oh man, I'm sure I was trying to please my parents. Oh man. And I'm sure I didn't do something right. Oh, wait, are you saying that I wouldn't feel as bad or wouldn't pick on myself or wouldn't whatever if I did something quote wrong? If I found the origin of it and realized that it was somebody else's energy being gifted to me? I know this sounds complicated. It's not. You were all gifted by our parents with things and with energies, with judgments, with concerns, which aren't ours. Again, come Wednesday. Let's clear this. But when you recognize it, you are over halfway there. As importantly, let's say that an emotion comes to you out of the blue. You're having a sunshiny day. The day feels good. The day feels great. You go and meet up with Bob and all of a sudden, oh, I don't know why, but I feel terrible. Yeah, you just took on Bob's energy. Or if somebody comes to visit you. So we used to live on Maui and so many beautiful souls would come to visit us. But sometimes they'd visit us and they'd leave and we'd feel like, oh, I'm so confused. <laughs> What just happened? They gifted you with their confusion. Or, heaven forbid, you go onto social media or you turn on the news and the whole world feels dark and gloomy. It didn't come from you. So when an emotion comes up, what you want to do is ask, what's the earliest point I felt this emotion. Where did this emotion start? I was feeling great. I was going about my day. Everything was perfect. Bob came over. And then I, oh, wait a second. Find that inception point. Ask, what was I doing? What was I thinking? Who was I with? And then please, pretty please, ask the question, did this emotion originate with me. Did it start with me? For if you can find the when, you often find the whom. If you find the when, you often find the whom. And you'll realize it didn't begin with me. Here's the really cool thing. Don't just do it about your, your Bob visit, for instance. Do it about anything and everything in life. Ask, when did this emotion start? What was the inception point? What was I doing? What was I thinking? How was I acting? How was I feeling? Who was there at the time? And did this start with me? You do this and you will disown. You will stop taking ownership 
of other people's energy before it infuses and weaves yourself, weaves itself into the soul of your beingness so that we have to do a major clearing. Instead, you will catch the inception point much faster and go, wait a second, that ain't mine. I let it go. And then you feel so, so, so much better. With that said, again, do come join us Wednesday. I know that uh, I is putting the links in there. Our team is putting the links in there. Come join us with our School of Mystics. Let's get you extra light. Let's get you extra alive. That's what this is about. So I'm going to take a sip of water, and then we are going to dive into some questions. We're going to do a meditation a little bit on the early side tonight. Um, going to get to bed early because I hear baby Hana is asleep now. In fact, I probably should be a little bit quieter now. I'm learning. I am learning. All right. So let's go to Radhika. It is oft said, I love that, that the negative forces appear in disguise. How do I discern what is evil, dark, protected by another? I thank you immensely. I thank you, Radhika, for your question. I have very different views of uh, evil and darkness uh, than a lot of people do. I see everything as teaching energy. Some of it's very hard. Some of it's teaching energy that can take you out. Um, but I see it all if we can understand it as part of our ascension. So I try not to bring the ooga booga nature to the energy. You're hit with you're hit with crap. You're hit with crap. Call it what is it what it is. But we can learn from that crap. So I don't have to label it as anything other than this feels terrible. This really, that's being present in the moment. God, this feels awful. What do I do about it? <laughs> well, it's clear. Well, do I have to worry that if I clear that somebody's going to bite me or something's going to bite me? No, just, you know, stop, drop and clear. That's what I would do. The this is dark forces, this is evil. To me, that starts to get into story. And as you start to create story, then that which threw this energy at you wins. If instead you don't create the story that this is an ooga booga badness, but it's just funky energy that I want nothing to do with, you win. Ultimately, we all win. It's all a learning game. But I wouldn't play the energetic story game of putting more to it than, wow, that person just slung some poop at me. What can I do to clear it and clear it fast? So sending so, so, so much love your way, Radhika. Tarika, Teresa. How do you become aware when it's someone you love and live with? I'm much better with outside energy. My husband has health issues, and when he's down, I succumb before I know it. All right. It's a challenge, and it is a challenge for every couple. It is a challenge for even the best couples because um, our energy gets so intertwined and interwoven. What can you do? Do some energetic hygiene. Do the exercises here. Ask, did this come from me? If it did not come from you, do some rooting exercises. Do some clearing exercises. There's a clearing prayer that I've taught many times before, and I'll teach it here again. And its origins, Dr. Bradley Nelson, you, you got to learn emotion code. The guy is the man. Love him, love him, love him so dearly. Emotion code, Dr. Bradley Nelson. It's a combination of emotion code and holographic kinetics and soul retrieval work. But in... In essence, you can grab a magnet, you can grab your cell phone, it's got a magnet in it. Um, and I, I go to the angels, you can change or tweak the clearing statement or however it works for you. But if you, before you go to bed every single night, Teresa, you go Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Uriel, higher self, higher team, and all angels, God and light workers here for my highest good and the highest good of all. Please help me clear the strings, cables, cords, and attachments between me and my husband that are bringing me down, between me and whomever that is making me exhausted, that is making me feel stuck, that is making me feel lost, that is taking me out of my sweet and centered place. Please help remove these strings, cables, cords, and attachments. Now and forever, thank you. Put a hand on the heart, take your magnet, go over your head a whole bunch of times. You might find yourself yawn. As the energy comes out, you might find yourself burp, belt, gas, <laughs> tinglingness, who knows? But what you're doing is you're cutting the cords, not the cords of love, Teresa. 
those cords can't be cut, but we're cutting the cords of energy that are causing confusion. This is kind of that codependent dance, causing confusion between what energy is mine and what energy is my partner's. And that is a healing journey for both of you. And I think probably every couple on the planet, ours included, could benefit from doing this hygiene, this couple's hygiene on a daily basis. Sonia. I help my mom out of obligation. I am resenting it. She is very negative. How do I change feeling resentful? I feel exhausted after spending time with her. Sonia, what I just mentioned to Teresa works very well for you as well. However, we have an inherent challenge here. We get to choose either a different way of viewing what we're doing or choose a different way of doing. It is, geez, it's like swallowing poison to say, I'm doing something out of obligation and I resent it. All it's going to do is make you feel worse. So either A, we choose to say, I am doing this out of love and we choose to do it out of love. We choose to get to reassociate meaning to this give it new meaning and do the out of honor, out of love, taking care of your mom. Do it from there and you're no longer drinking poison. You'll feel much better. Your mom will feel much better and you'll live much longer. Or this is awful. But Sonia, you get to find some other help for your mom and get the hell out. You know, that's the harder of the two roads. But one of those two roads, you either have to change how you're viewing what you're doing or you have to change what you're doing. Now, can we enshroud ourselves in a bubble of love and light? Absolutely. Can't recommend that enough. Can we look on a moment by moment basis of how I can change my energy? Absolutely. Can't recommend that enough. But one of those two things need to change either how you're viewing the situation or how you're living the situation. Faith therapist, if a person feels a strong wave of love and gratitude towards someone else, is that spirit working through a person? Is that spirit working through a person? I'm not sure, Faye, if you're saying, is it that per the other person that is working through? <laughs> I'm not sure. The If you're feeling a strong wave of love and gratitude, it means A, your heart is cracked wide open. B, you have gotten in a resonant frequency or vibration, heart coherence with the other person. Could that be coming from their spirit? Absolutely. Or their higher self, really the same thing? Absolutely. Could it just be coming from your higher self or spirit? Absolutely. But what we want to do is feel it and amplify it and send it back with everything we've got, because that energy never starts with us. It emanates through us. But understand, we are, we're old school lanterns. So we're the glass. There's a light behind the glass. That light that shines through you didn't even come from you. But when you feel that light beaming bright, crank it up to the max, experience it, feel it, amplify it, play in it, stay in it and ask, how can I have more of it? And then share that more of it with everyone, which based on your, your name on here alone, that's exactly what you're doing. But ultimately you've gone, you've cracked your heart open and you're in a state of heart coherence, vibrating with that other person. And that's pretty awesome, Faye. <laughs> Mary, how does it get any better than this? I hear, uh, Mary, you may have a birthday tomorrow. Woohoo! It's your birthday. <laughs> lots of love, Mary. Lots and lots and lots of love. Big shift, ha shift happened in my life. Careful with that word. And I am so relieved, happy, and free for the first time in a long, long time. Will clearings be at a different level now, too? Yes, clearings always work like layers of the onion. Um, there is one thing trapped below the next thing, trapped below the next. So as we peel off those top layers, we find new layers to clear and new layers to clear and help you get lighter and lighter and lighter still. I saw this coming, Mary. I'm not saying this as a, I saw this like like I'm, I'm great for seeing this. 
I just saw this, meaning I am so happy for you. And I know you're going to clear more and more and more and more and get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter still. And you will have crisis. We all have crisis. We have uh, interpersonal crisis. We have relationship crisis. We have health crisis. We have financial crisis. We have all of these crises that appear to be crisis, but are actually helping us to evolve and grow. The hardest thing in the moment is to see them as gifts. And Mary, I believe you are starting to see this as the awesome gift for which it is. Woohoo! Take a few more questions, then we'll go into a brief meditation. And then uh, hopefully see you Wednesday for our School of Mystics, where we're going to do a really, 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 really big and fun clearing with you. And uh, then um, we're going to start up our meditations here next week. And Tuesday night, remember, Tuesday night, not Monday night will be our next live event. How does it get any better than this? Uh, SK Abstract Art, question. Is there a quick way to do a little energy protection? Yes. I feel people's energy on the plane when I travel. If I sit next to someone with physical pain, arthritis, I feel it creep up my arms. Here's what I would do. It's a prayer that I call G-SPI. G-S-P-I, call it G-SPI. And it's a way to protect yourself in a loving bubble or a bubble of golden love and light. Now, I say this prayer to God. God to me is not a bearded white guy in the sky. It's just this energy, this field of love, of energy that it is everything and everyone. So I'm going to say the prayer with the term God in there. But you could use Jesus, Buddha, Allah, Jehovah, giant cheeseburger in the sky, Mother Mary, not to compare her to a giant cheeseburger in the sky, please, no, but you can, you get the idea. You can pray to whomever or whatever works for you. Muhammad, it's all beautiful. It's all love. So here's what I would say is I would do this before I get on the airplane. Thank you, God, for guiding me. That's the G and G spy. Thank you, God, for guiding me with your love and light. Thank you, God, for surrounding. And imagine yourself being surrounded by this beautiful bubble of love and light. Thank you, God, for surrounding me. That's the S, surrounding me with your love and light. Thank you, God, for P, protecting me. Ta-da! Protecting me with your love and light. Thank you, God, for imbuing, filling each cell of my being, protecting every cell of my beingness, even those cells going up your arm, with your love and light. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Then got on the airplane, go through the airplane, get off the airplane, grab your cell phone or grab your magnet, replay what I mentioned about 10 minutes ago, put your hand on your heart and clear off everyone's energy. So between you and me, we have some amazing people here tonight, but I'm an empath. Actually, Jessica, truth be told, if I'm an empath, I'm a baby empath. Jessica is a giant of an empath. And so my sensitivity is nothing compared to hers, which makes it more challenging for her because I have big energy. But I'm going to get done with this event tonight. And the empath that I am, I get to do my Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Uriel. Higher self, higher team, all angels, God, light workers, here's my highest good and highest good of all. Please help clear the strings, cords, cables, and attachments between me and everyone in the event tonight, between me and everybody who will watch this past, future, and present, between me and everyone who saw this or a likeness of this tonight. Please help remove these cables, cords, strings, and attachments now and forever. Thank you. And I get to clear off the energy from any attachments between me and you or me and anyone here because we all, only always, we all, only, always, want to exist in our energetic field and nobody else's. If there's a challenge in our household, it's that my energy overruns onto others. And we all get to clear that energy and make safe energetic space for everyone around us. So we clear, we create the bubble, and we can watch our energy. That's something you learn too, as to how to watch your energy more carefully. Although that one can be a challenge. All right. Information gatherer. I'm clearly corded even when I cut them. You cut those cords and how do you prevent them from coming back? Again, let's create that bubble of love and light. Let's do that. And again, realize 
energy creeps. Energy will creep back. This may have to be a regular practice. I wouldn't do a clearing after tonight's event and go, oh, that, that's done. I'm done for life. No, I'm going to clear. Let's put it this way. Information gatherer. Every time you step in the mud and you go into the house, you're either going to wipe your shoes or take them off, right? Same thing energetically. Every time you go into the world or you put yourself around somebody where you're going to pick up mud, clean off your shoes every single time. This is a hygienic process to keep you and your energy and your energy alone. Susan Slight. Oh, this is the biggest question of them all. Why do you go to the RV dealership on your birthday rather than the lake where you want him to be? Susan, my ego caught in the way and convinced me I could have both my cake and eat it too. And frankly, this RV is weighing on me. I want her to go to a good home before RV season ends. But that's also my thinking mind, Susan. So between you and me, I could have done better. Hmm. That's in quotes. That's judgment. But it was not nearly the fun day that I had planned on of just hanging out on the lake. Instead, I was driving around to dealerships and then being too tired to hang out at the lake. So, Susan, I want a do-over. And with any luck and blessings, this Thursday, I will get a do-over to go hang at the lake a week after my birthday. But I am learning just as much as any of us. And, and I admit the, uh, there is a very strong pull to um, liberate the RV at this moment. Um, hmm. Learning, learning, Susan, we're all learning. So much love and thank you for, let's, let's be honest, calling me on that because uh, had I to do over again, I would have gone straight to the lake first and foremost. Now I did go to the lake a few days afterwards um, but uh, we need to get there in the morning when it's nice and quiet. We get to get there in the morning when it's nice and quiet. And I think um, with Rue, for the first trip on a boat, uh, with Rue staying at home, and then we'll bring Rue back out to the boat. If I know where we're going to go, I know where the boats are, I know where we're going to go and play. Last two questions of the evening. Uh, Miss Elvang, should we just be mad about everything? Eh, no. Live. Love. Uh, risk everything. Not, not literally, if you get what I'm saying, but meaning I want you to put yourself out there and it's so hard to do. It's so hard sometimes even for me to do. We are living in a world that has taught us, taught us to turn down the flame and turn down the light to keep ourselves safe, which means we're only half living. Why only half live, Miss, Le Miss L. Vang? Live with everything you've got. Ooh. It's from Susan. As empaths, can we spread our kindness and make others feel better? Or do we only take on others' energy? Oh, God, no. As empaths, first and foremost, we spread our kindness and can help others feel better. That is why we are the wayfarers. We are the light shiners for the whole world. We lead the way with our light. Once we understand how not to dim it for others, how not to take on other people's energy and turn down our light. But that's exactly what you're here to do, Susan. You are here to shine your light on the world. You are here to help raise others up. And you are exquisitely suited for it. All I'm helping you do and you're learning how to do is peel off kind of like, geez, oh, there's a terrible graphic. Peel off layer of layer of leeches of energy from you so that you can shine your light brighter on the world. Uh, I'm going to take one last tiny little question here from T. Rose Lover because we're almost all experiencing this. How do you prevent from absorbing other people's energy in a Zoom meeting? And yes, class Wednesday, School of Mystics Wednesday, when you come join us for the clearing Wednesday, is in a Zoom meeting. Do your G-Spy. Thank you, God, for guiding me, surrounding me, protecting me, imbuing me with your love and light. Put yourself in that bubble of love and light. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Or whomever, whatever works for you. And then afterwards, after you finish the Zoom meeting, you go to the angels, guides, whomever works for you. Archangel Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, Uriel, higher self, higher team, all angels, God, might work here for my highest good and the highest good of all. Please help me remove the cables, cords, strings, and attachments between me and everyone in the Zoom meeting now and forever. Thank you. And get it cleared right off of you. Zoom meetings are one heck of a party to pick up 
other people's energy. I haven't figured out why yet. If it's this that's going on, if it's the intensity of trying to focus or what it is, but it feels real easy to get other people's energy during a Zoom meeting. All right, so let us dive into a meditation here. And, uh, and then I'll look forward to seeing you on Wednesday, where we're going to do one heck of a clearing with the School of Mystics. And I know I and Anne are putting the link there. Thank you to my entire dream team. We're going to have a lot of fun on Wednesday. All right, so here we are. Um, take a sip of water first. Hmm. I want you to take a nice deep breath in through the nose, down onto the belly, <clears throat> and out through the nose. In and out. In and out. Now, as you continue to breathe in and out, I want you to picture the most amazing, mighty oak you've ever, ever seen. If you can't picture an oak, maybe it's a redwood. Sequoia, banyan tree, whatever is the strongest, most powerful, most rooted tree you could ever imagine. Can you see that tree? Can you imagine walking over to it and putting your hand against that tree? How does the tree feel? How is the bark? Is it smooth? Is it coarse? Is it sharp, soft, or maybe even tacky? Just study the bark for just a moment more. And now what I'd like you to do is turn around and put your back up against the tree. How do you feel? Do you feel stronger? Do you feel protected? Do you feel rooted? And now what I'd like you to do, we could call this a little unusual. I would like you to ask permission of the tree. Tree, do I have your permission to merge with your beautiful energy? And with her, his permission, I would like you to now step back to where you are inside of the tree. In essence, the tree and you are one. You can feel the hundreds, if not thousands of gallons of water a day being drawn upward through your roots, through your feet, all the way to the top of your head. You can feel the buzzing, tingling energy out the tip of your fingertips as you are producing energy through the light of the sun. That photosynthesis is going on right inside of you. You can feel yourself as a home to tens, hundreds, or even thousands of woodland creatures, from the bugs, from the birds, to the microbes, to everywhere in between. Even the occasional fox hanging out beneath.
you can feel yourself transforming carbon dioxide into life-giving oxygen all around. And most importantly, as I have you stomp your feet on the ground, you can feel yourself connected to the tree's roots as one. And you are completely firmly connected, plugged in and rooted into the earth. You are this tree. This tree is you. You are rooted, you are grounded, you are connected, and you are whole. Feel the strength of this mighty tree. Feel the power, the confidence. The tree is incredibly strong and yet need not say a word. And yet she has power. And now, so do you. For a tree never forgets who she is. A tree never gets lost in someone else's energy. And a tree always remains rooted in her or his tree-like nature. So the next time you find yourself spun, dazed, confused, lost, bereft, exhausted, come back to this meditation or come back to the tree in your mind's eye. Meld with the tree. Become one with the tree. Become rooted to the earth like the tree. And set yourself free. To be your greatest true nature to grow, to thrive, to fruit or, grow or bloom flowers, or simply grow the most amazing green canopy on earth. But come back to your tree nature and allow all that other energy to drain through your roots into the earth and be gone. Breathe in all the way to the top of the top leaves and out all the way down into the earth. Breathe in, take that energy up to the highest leaves again and out, root down into the earth. And in one more time, up, up, up. You can feel those leaves growing, glowing, expanding, filling every place with light and love as it transforms the energy of the sun into just that light, love, and energy. And out, root and drain into the earth, connect to the earth, plug into the earth, and feel yourself as one with the earth. And in and out, in and out, in and out. So feel free to come back here as often as you'd like or to replay this as often as you would like. I'll look forward to seeing you if you wanna come join us on Wednesday for a massive, massive clearing. I send so, so, so much love your way. And thank you everyone for your birthday wishes and keep on shining bright. How does it get any better than this? How does it get any better 
than this. Thank you, Aya. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, everyone in the Dream Team. Thank you guys so, so much. And have a beautiful evening ahead or morning ahead. Keep on shining bright. Love you guys so much. Night.